Welcome to the Lawrence Public Library Sound and Vision Studio. In this video, we're going to show you how to get started recording audio in our main SV recording studio space. To get started recording, first mount a microphone onto a stand. If you're recording using the RLX mudguard stand, the easiest way to do this is to loosen the bottom nut so that the barrel spins freely. Then, you can hold the mic firmly in one hand while spinning the pole into the threads of the microphone shock mount. Tightening the nut underneath will finish securing the microphone into position. If you're using a regular mic stand without the mudguard, the process is the same. Just loosen the boom arm and carefully thread it into the microphone shock mount. Now you're ready to plug in your microphone. Take notice of the Apogee audio interface on the right hand side of the desk. This is where all of the audio comes into the computer. You'll plug your microphone into different channels depending on where you want to perform. If you want to perform by the computer in the control room, just plug into channels 1 or 2 on the front of the Apogee audio interface. If you're performing in the tracking room, you'll plug your microphone into channels 3 through 8 here on the floor box. Most people start with channel 3. This box is simply an extension cable that plugs into the audio interface in the control room. Now that you've got your microphone plugged into your desired input channel, it's time to use the Apogee Control app on the iPad. This is where we'll control all of our audio input signals going into the computer. As you can see, there are two pages, channels 1 through 8, which are open and available to use, and channels 9 through 16, which are usually hardwired to our drum set and our big red modular synthesizer. There are two things that we need to do here. First of all, turn on the 48 volt button on your input channel. This sends a little bit of electricity down the microphone cable to the microphone to turn it on. This button is only really needed for condenser microphones found on the top two rows of our microphone cabinet and on the drum overheads. But if you're in doubt or you're not getting signal like you think you should, just turn it on. It won't hurt any of our mics here at the Sound & Vision Studio. The important thing is to remember to turn 48 volts off when plugging and unplugging your microphones from the system to avoid possibly damaging the microphones. Now that our 48 volts is applied and our mic is turned on, it's time to make sure that our input signal is coming into the computer at the proper volume. Turn up the input volume until the microphone's input signal reaches about halfway to two-thirds of the way up the input meter. Between 25 and 30 is a great place to start for most vocals. Now that we've got our input signal going into the computer at the proper volume, it's time to select our digital audio workstation software that we want to use. We have several available here at the Sound & Vision Studio, including Studio One by Personas, Logic Pro by Apple, GarageBand, Pro Tools, Reaper, the full Ableton Live 10 Suite, Audacity, and Reason Limited. Before we launch our software, we do have one last thing that we need to do. We need to set our Personas fader port controller to work with the software of our choice. To do this, press the first two select buttons while powering on the unit using the back right power button. Now just select Studio One mode, MCU mode for use with Logic, Ableton, or Reaper, or Huey mode for using the controller with Pro Tools. Once you've selected your software, just click Exit on the right-hand side, and the fader port will restart, and you can launch your software. If you're already familiar with one of these softwares, then you should be all set. If you're not familiar with audio software at all, then we recommend you start with Persona Studio One, since we have these helpful getting started videos located on the desktop, and Studio One is available on all of our Sound & Vision computers. Once you launch your software, we recommend starting with one of our ready-made templates created specifically to get you up and running quickly in the Sound & Vision Studio. So, for example, if we're using Studio One software, we create a new song, 
and then we choose a template from the list. This list includes several types of common projects found in the studio. Now really take your time here and notice the differences in these templates. We have simple vocal, hip hop, podcast, modular synthesizer, full band, and more. Besides some of the templates, you'll see numbers in parentheses. These numbers refer to the input channels that you'll plug your microphones into when using that particular template. So for example, our first template here is Simple Vocal Input 1. For this template, we would plug our microphone into channel 1 on the Apogee audio interface by the computer and perform in the control room. If we want to record in the tracking room, then we would select this second template on the list, Simple Vocal Input 3, and plug our microphone into channel 3 on the floor box in the tracking room. And the same goes for the hip-hop templates and the podcast templates. Just select your template for where you want to perform and which input channel you'll need to plug your microphones into. When using Studio One, you'll select your template, name your project or your song as they call it, and then you'll decide where to save it. We strongly suggest saving all of your projects straight to an external drive, like a USB flash drive. If you don't have a flash drive, we have them for sale at our tech desk. It's important to remember that all of our Sound & Vision computers do erase and reset each day. So you'll want to make sure that you have all of your files on your external drive and you don't leave anything saved on the computer. If you have any questions about this when finishing up your session, just ask our studio manager or our tech desk for assistance. Once you select a template, your software will open and it won't just be a blank screen there will already be tracks created, your input routing from your microphones will be correct, and it'll really save you a lot of time getting started. And no matter what software you select, this list of templates will be identical. So make sure to take advantage of the ease of use provided by our ready-made templates. A couple notes, if you're using GarageBand, it acts a little differently and it loads up a simple vocal session by default. So if you want to load a template, you'll need to go to the File menu in the upper left corner, select Open New, and load your template from there. If you're using Pro Tools, there's actually a folder right on the desktop that contains all of your templates. So just click on the folder and start from there. All right, so now that we've chosen our software and loaded our template, it's time to record. In Studio One, you'll first need to record enable your track, and then click on the large circle at the bottom to begin recording. When recording, you should see the cursor moving from left to right and your waveforms showing up in neon green. For even more specific information on how to get started with Studio One, just check out our instructional videos located right on the desktop. If you're using other audio software like Logic Pro, GarageBand, or Pro Tools, recording is very similar. Just click on the red record enable button on your track. Sometimes you'll need to click on an orange or a green input monitor button right beside it. And then you click the large circular record button found at the top or the bottom of the screen. Another important control to be aware of is the main speaker volume knob found on the Apogee control remote. This large knob controls the playback volume of the main monitor speakers in the control room. It doesn't affect your headphone volume. To adjust your headphone volume, plug a pair of headphones into channels one, two, three, or four on the headphone amp or on the other side of the wall in the tracking room, and adjust your headphone volume using the knob right below each channel number here on the front of the headphone amp. With this setup, you can have four or more people all listening to headphones with their own separate volume controls. And lastly, if you are engineering in the control room and your performers are wearing headphones in the tracking room, you'll need to communicate to them. To do this, press on the speaker volume knob. This will allow you to talk back through the headphones to your performers. All right, now it's time for a quick recap. So to record in the studio, just set up a microphone, plug it into your desired input channel, grab the iPad, find that channel, Turn it on with the 48 volt button and turn up the input volume until your signal reaches about half to two thirds of the way up the input meter.
to make sure that your signal comes into the computer at the proper volume. Now that that's set, select which audio software you'd like to use and set the fader port controller to work with your desired software. With that set, open up your software, select a template, plug your headphones in in the control room or in the tracking room and adjust their volume, record enable your track, and begin recording. Good luck, and thanks for taking the time to watch our Sound and Vision Basics.